Now we are recording. So, um, Sydney and Roy, can you tell me a little bit about um, your topic? What was the topic? Uh, and why was it important to you at this point? Uh, do you want to go first, Sydney? <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay, well, the title of our, our topic was Centering Tycho Values Against the Influence of White Supremacy. And so uh, we knew um, it's, it's a big statement, and it's, a, it's actually kind of from the very start, you know, when you read it, it's, it raises a lot of questions. And that's what we were trying to do is just raise awareness and questions and um, challenge people in, in different ways and being very, very direct. And so um, and what we wanted to try to do was um, actually just get a feel for everyone on how they kind of viewed uh, that whole topic and within the context actually of, of Tycho or their groups. And um, as you heard before earlier um, when we were describing, um, <clears throat> the end product though is really talking about the values and, and that was the important part is because we felt uh, we needed to get to that point at the very end for everyone to be thinking about themselves, their own personal values, and then looking at their group values, and within the context of how um, the prior discussions, which was talking about the white supremacy, the oppression, the different uh, leadership uh, values that go on within a group, um, and just different things in that context, and how, how it really kind of uh, impacts them uh, at the end. And, and it really brought forward, I guess, uh, questions with different individuals in different ways, you know, one one thing I was hearing from the individuals was um, was a challenge for them to work with the other members of their group to kind of shift what the group thinks the members think and how they're acting with different contemporary issues like right now the Black Lives Matter and how are they responding to that or not responding to that or even um, just within a context are they even thinking about a, a cultural context of how they play is that important or, or it's because of some people or some groups it was just the fact they're just playing taiko and it was hard and seemed like very little even historical context of why that is and so it was a little bit interesting to hear why they're even trying to play taiko, what that means for them. And so um, everyone seemed to have brought a, a different level of how that was important for them and, uh, and what that meant and how they're going to try to do that. So um, I feel what we were trying to do in that process or how we kind of got there was uh, hopefully helpful to them to kind of make that help make some decisions or to think about how to move forward and within their own group context. And that was to me the most important thing is how the, are they gonna individually act on their own to do something else next? Mm. Let Sydney kind of expand on that. Okay. Um, I think maybe I'll answer the, um, cause yeah, I think Roy did a great job at um, describing the topic. Um, we felt that it was important for us to facilitate this, um, I guess myself personally, like I am in a position I, um, where I talk a lot about wellness in our community. And, um, and so I'm, I'm observing, I think, how Tycho um, is, serves a therapeutic purpose um, for a lot of different players at different stages of their lives. And so to me, there's not like one um, like style of Tycho that is um, like more effective at promoting wellness than another style. It's rather like, does this type of group and does this Tycho experience like serve um, each individual need in that moment um, and in their specific situation? And so then, um, yeah, I kind of wanted to then center that discussion around values because to me, it's uh, important that we each find um, like, our best fit, like our, the best relationship that really serves us as individual players and also how, how our, us as individual, individual players helps create this um, healthy community with, within each group. So it does really to me tie back to wellness and um, ultimately stems from this discussion of um, you know, systems of oppression and who holds the power and privilege in our Taiko community and how um, maybe those barriers are, the, are also the barriers to um, inequities that prevent this sort of movement toward wellness. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of really, uh, the more I, I was thinking about um, wellness and also because I'm kind of more primed to think about um, ableism and disability justice, 
based up based on my background um that's kind of really where um we concluded to the discussion of wellness i'm sorry of values and um, i thought it was really important that roy and i led this together um i think that part of our discussion was that you know there are people in our type of community who hold who hold um a lot of power and privilege and you know one person being like someone like roy and so we thought that like having the kind of intergenerational um dynamic in and also differences in gender and race like there's a lot of things that um we as co-facilitators um could discuss as well um and we thought that that com coming out from different perspectives um really where we were hoping um would create like a safe space um to kind of bring up some of these topics that maybe i don't feel comfortable bringing up um, and maybe Roy is in a, you know, doesn't feel kind of bring it up so that we were able to have those discussions like in a really um, kind of, I guess, holistic way. Um, yeah. Karen, are we supposed to talk about your <laughs> discussion too? Okay. And I can always do it afterwards too. But, um, what would you say was like your reflection now that it's project is over? Like, yeah. Um, I guess my main reflection is there's this topic was so huge. There's so much work, more work to do. And actually this was just one small group to kind of start with. Um, and so uh, definitely the um, discussion or the opportunity to kind of do this somehow shared information a little bit more is really on, a, on our minds in what way that could be possible. Um, and I think we're just beginning to talk about that, the Cindy and I about, you know, what is what are the possible ways to to uh, continue this dialogue with different people, whether it's um, something similar to what we just finished or something more compact, where it's just more of a lecture that we're presenting or or something like this instead of a, a discussion group. And so um, I guess it's just important that we're able to kind of put things out there. And just to kind of add on to what Sydney was saying about, you know, uh, how the two of us seem to work really well together as far as creating that um, different kind of spaces. Um, and it was brought up earlier in a discussion where uh, you have a, a well-known person in your group who you don't want to challenge because, because of you know, how you know this person. Um, and I was, I was very trying to be very conscious of the fact that I could be that person in our group at that time. And so I was trying to really encourage people that we, um, whenever we're talking in this format, you should be able to challenge whoever is in the room. And if you're not able to do that, then um, it's really kind of defeating your purpose of what you're trying to do. And we were talking about a lot about Kohai Senpai, what Sensei means and those kind of concepts. And so if you're not able to challenge the leadership, um, it would be really, um, you're not going to get anywhere. Well, this is interesting. Do you ha either of you have thoughts on how we might be able to set up those kinds of spaces? I know. So speak, go ahead. Well, I know challenges can sometimes imply, you know, hard um, unwillingness. You know, and on one hand, like um, I know one question might be like, how do we not because sometimes the person who's in that position doesn't get um, doesn't get to grow, you know. In some ways, they get left alone, you know. So challenge in some some people's minds might imply that there's resistance, um, but there also just might be like no opportunity to to grow because no one has encouraged or you know, um, yeah, offered something different, right? So. Um, do you both have thoughts on how we might, I mean, challenge is a fine word to write, to use right now, but you know, how we might all grow? I think okay. that, um, you know, there are, that people in our tech community have different, um, power, like, and I think that that's like just a reality of our world. And I think that there are, like, our voices also are not, um, equal in that like some people will say something and it might kind of get a little bit more attention than others and I think that's also just part of like systemic 
issues in our society as well. And so I think like, just kind of maybe, yes, like it is important that we do um, like eventually try and dismantle that um, in a pattern of behavior, but, I'll, but until then, I think that that's just important also to keep in mind when we um, have these discussions. And so, you know, it's easy for us to say, oh, speak out, you know, like be honest, but like not everybody is going to feel safe and comfortable doing that. And especially with Tycho, where we have a lot of people that might, this is like their livelihood and like their reputation lies on this. And so um, there are maybe some people that aren't, aren't gonna feel like they have a safety, safety net to um, speak out. And so I think just being informed by that, sorry, the train, the train, um, is important to keep in mind. Um, and also the people with a little more um, power and privilege um, could maybe also recognize that and, you know, just be aware of, of okay, how can I, um, I guess, utilize it to also make sure that other people's voices are being amplified in the right way, you know? And I think that's tricky. That's kind of why we have these discussions um, is to try to navigate that. But yeah, I think that was one of the takeaways is that like, you know, there's not like a, a um, very clear roadmap of like, oh, what do we have to do next? It's like each individual is gonna have their own um, comfort level and their own kind of um, way of, of like awareness, I guess, or like their own journey of like activism, right? And so, and also their own like kind of expectation of what the Taiko community serves to them. And so I think it was more just like, okay, well, it does also require an element of self-reflection and, you know, how do we mindfully move through these discussions in a way that's also um, like, something that is true to ourselves and, uh, and realistic and um, yeah, it's kind of like always that, that constant like assessment. Um, and it's very individualized, I think. So I think that was kind of like, great. Corey, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Uh, no, Sydney said that very well. I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's always hard to, um, a person in a group to really be able to challenge when they when they're just starting out because you know, they're sometimes being told a certain way or sometimes not even being told it's all assumed that they're supposed to somehow osmosally you know just automatically learn these uh, rules or the culture of the group and so it's not very well explained and so um, people are put into a position of trying to uh, react or not react because um, they just don't know exactly what's right or wrong and so I think we need to somehow change that culture within groups. And what it really leads to is uh, how do we change the leadership within groups? And um, that, that to me is the bigger question of, um, or the task um, that has to be done. And not all leaders within the Taiko community are gonna recognize the fact that they need to change. Yeah. Yeah. Part of our Tyco ecosystem is that there's going to be all kinds of different yeah. <laughs> right. personal yeah. style. Right. Part, yeah, part of what was in the dialogue too was there's uh, around the value statement is that um, groups or people um, come in and um, there's these assumed values in the Tyco community that exist. And so groups pick those up or individuals kind of pick them up and assume this is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, for whatever reason, without challenging what those values really are for them and how they, um, if that's really right or wrong at that, for them at that time. Mm -hmm. And that also has to change. Yeah, yeah. Or assessing like whether or not, you know, if inclusivity is a value, but it's not actually something that is being practiced, then I think that that also needs to be adjusted in a way that's, that's more transparent um, and authentic, I think. And I think that Kind of transparency is is really what allows us to make an informed decision um, of how we engage with the Taiku community and that I think is an act of wellness. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, anything else before I shut off the recording? Yeah, I think of anything else. Yeah. Um, Did we answer all your questions? <laughs> yeah, I mean we wanted this to be a little bit of a journal 
I mean, was it you, Sydney, that said in the last roundabout that there was a healthy mix of like collegiate and Buddhists and um, Buddhist groups, Buddhist techo represented, and that um, you had you had kind of shared some specific examples of maybe it was how people were talking or not talking, or you know, uh, uh, I don't think statements or didn't have mission statements. Yeah, um, well, we talked about the mission statement thing. Our, um, we, we had a pretty diverse group, but I, I think that statement about the Buddhist and non-Buddhist and all that was from someone else, um, one of the other presenters. Um, yeah, I, I guess, it, again, it just goes back to because the group started in different ways and formats, the, the value system it really is, uh, was kind of built on with that particular way or you know what what was the lineage of where they started from you know comes from that so it would be interesting to do sort of a, a value lineage study you know how did groups kind of come to what those values are from for them yeah you know? yeah and really fast we didn't want to like put a like moral hierarchy on like what the values are you know it's like people in that are college included taiko like if their values include like performance quality and physical excellence like that's and like really strict, you know, like regimented schedules, like that's kind of what they need. And so um, like, that's okay too. So it was really, to us, it wasn't like a, these are the correct values. These are more, you know, like um, morally better, but it was just like, okay, what are they? And like, how do we find the right fit? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And what's assumed versus, yeah, it's actually stated. Great. Thanks. Thanks to you both. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>